Hello, in this video I will be showing you ZFS. I recommend you start using ZFS. This is not going to be some full comprehensive guide to ZFS. This is more so just me promoting and demonstrating some ZFS capabilities. So, let's see. I have here uh, here open on my RAM disk. Uh, I mean, I have here on my RAM disk three virtual disk images. So this is disk number one and disk number two and disk number th number three. Levin Finnish means disk basically. So those are three disks and then here I have the virtual machine command so it's basically let's see so it's basically just a virtual so it's basically just a QM command this is the path to the operating system ISO because I'm using the live environment of the Linux Mint ISO so yeah this virtual machine command, the QEMU command, I give it four uh, drives in total, including the CD-ROM, so this is also a drive. Three of the drives are the hard drives, so here level 1 and level 2 and level 3. So that's the virtual machine command. So here it is running the virtual machine. This is now the virtual machine. And I have here... I'm here watching set ball status every 0.1 seconds. By the way, the command for that is this. So, that's continuously giving the status. Now, on those three disks that I showed you, I have... Uh, mounted it as a, uh, uh, by the way, I'll also show you that to this command here. Mm. It doesn't want to zoom in. So this command here, sudo set ball import z data z data, that's just a name. It's an arbitrary name, you could give it any name. With that you can import the any file system I'll actually show you this thing I put here yeah this is basically in a text form pretty easily explained this is how you create a raid z1 uh, zfs system using three hard drives these are the level 1 level 2 and level 3 so that's how you create it for the first time and then this is how you open it in case that this is not necessary generally if you're just using the ZFS on your same in the same computer. But if you take those comp if you take those hard drives out of your computer and into another new computer, then this is the command you would use there to take that import that into the new computer basically. And then here is the big thing. This but I will be now showing you the demonstration here. In case of a file disk, this means that the disk could be getting corrupted or just stops working outright entirely and you have to replace it with a new one. Anything like that, if it just stops working like that, then here I'll just say that like, yeah, I just identify the disk. Then this is the command you want to run on it, the disk that has stopped working. Now, there may be some weird cases if the set set if the if the hard drive has some weird corruption on it, the ZFS might not first understand what's going on, and it thinks that it's some other file system thing. So that's why I put this here, that like in case it's some weird, it it detects some, it it thinks it detects some file system on it, despite there not actually being any real file system. It's just a corrupted, corrupted nonsense. Yeah, like if the if the disk just corrupts, so. The same disk, so the same thing you have already there, and it's just corrupted. Then you can do that sort of thing. But or if you have some other crap on the disk already from before, 
this is not necessarily necessary, like, you don't need to do that in general, like, if your hard drive fails and you replace it with a new hard drive, then this isn't necessary at all, this is, this is not necessary, you just do this for the new, do this for the new hard drive that you put in, and of course you put the character in the new hard drive, this should probably be the same one, whatever it happens to be, but like, in case you have some weird, bizarre corruption thing going on, then like, you can do this, you can just cat some dev zero into the hard drive and also you don't have to do the entire hard drive with this i think it's like only the beginning or something like some partition table stuff at the beginning of the disk or whatever i'm, I'm not exactly sure on that you might not need to do the entire disk you can just basically enter and then just hit ctrl c soon after or whatever i don't really care it doesn't really matter but yeah generally do you, you don't need that stuff so you, you can almost just forget about that it's just in case of some bizarre corruption going on or in case you already have some stuff on the hard drive or whatever. Yeah, okay, enough of that. I'm just repeating myself now for the millionth time, so let's move on. Uh, yes, so. Uh, this is just the record, screen recorder put that away. Now, let's see. Uh, so, here's the status. Sewing and... Uh, yeah, everything is working well. On this, uh, this is now the hard drive, the virtual hard drive stuff. I have downloaded from YouTube some random videos, some random YouTubers and their mind test videos. So I'm just fast forwarding through this. Just to show you that there are some videos that I've downloaded. It's just some random videos. Uh, I'm not gonna be concerned with any copyright nonsense now because this is just for demonstrating the fact that there are videos here. So I don't really care about the copyright. I might put in some credit into the description or something for these videos or whatever, who cares. I just downloaded some mind test videos from YouTube, it doesn't really matter what these are. Like, it, it's just know, that, no, just know that there are some videos, and I put, also put in some LibreWolf web browsers there. Yeah, LibreWolf launches. So everything is working well. Uh, oh, yeah, and also, also I, should, I should also specify that the size specifically for each of these disks is one gigabyte. So it's three gigabytes in total, but because of the RAID set one, it's actually only some something two gigabytes. Uh, let's see, if it's showing the yeah, just just under one, just under two gigabytes. There is the actual size because of the RAID set one. So anyway, you can see that the disk is almost entirely used, just a few hundred, two hundred plus megabytes of space remaining, so the entire disk has basically been filled. Now, let's get to the interesting stuff. Uh, I will throw some corrupt nonsense into the disk, so uh, this is the size of a gigabyte in bytes. And here I have a command, I've been testing it earlier, I can clear that so it doesn't bother you. Anyway, Shit, I was supposed to zoom in. Whatever. There you have the command. So I'm gonna throw in some corruption, so just some random nonsense data. Just, just random nonsense. The U random here. Just, I'm just gonna do that. And I'm gonna fill disk number two with nonsense. And I will hit enter. And now that's done. So disk number two is now filled with nonsense. So it's just random random data. So this could simulate some corruption, or whatever, you know, okay, well it is simulating corruption, so now if I start the videos, you can see that the videos are playing back just fine, as if nothing is going on. And you can see this thing starts throwing some errors. And that's good, that means it's working. So, the videos are playing fine, as you can see. So despite one of the discs being entirely filled with random white noise, it's still playing the videos just fine, because of the, uh, what is it called, the parity or something, what's the term for it, the paro parity, parity, parody, no, parody, parity, something like that. Anyway, regardless of what it's called, the videos are playing just fine, and I can open that LibreWolf web browser app image, everything is working. This despite one of those hard drives just being filled with noise. So. What to do then? What now? It's it's ruined. This thing says that it's degraded. And there's some error messages going on here. Well, let's replace the hard drive with 
let's fix the situation. So set pool replace set data is the name, and that's a lot better. You can give it your own name, but it has to be the same name you've given it when you created it. So then uh, let's do that and make sure to select the correct hard drive. If you accidentally replace the wrong hard drive, then well, just don't do that sort of nonsense. Just make sure that you're replacing the correct uh, hard drive. And that is the error I was talking about. In case it's filled with, like, if, if there's some corruption, that's why I make that there. Yeah, this one. In case some error about some unknown file systems. Yeah, that's the error. So, like, it, it thinks that there's some sort of a some sort of an existing file system there, despite there not being any file system there, it's just white noise. So in case there is white noise, or some other corruption, I mean, realistically, at this point you would just replace the hard drive, if you, like, if it's if it's broken. Like, if the hard drive is actually physically broken, you take out the hard drive and you put in a new one, so it's going to be clear of any stuff, but in case there is something there, you could always just fill it with zeros, so... I'll first have to give myself a permission to, I'll just give it to everyone, who cares, read and write to, read permission is already there, but I'll do it anyway, who cares, just, just write would be, be enough here like this, who cares, dev slash sd, that was just db, so now I have the permission to write nonsense to it, then sudo, uh, I'll just use the cat, uh, dev zero, I'll just fill the entire disk, it's gonna stop itself when it fills up dev sdp. So, yeah, there's no space left on the device, it filled the entire disk with zeros. So, yeah, you can see that changed to un unavailable, it's no longer degraded. Now it's just unavailable, so it's just zeros. So now it no longer thinks that there's any file system on it, it's just zeros. So now you can do that and it starts replacing, also you can see how stuff is going on there too, that's pretty cool. You can see, yeah, and now it's working as usual. So now, you have successfully fixed the hard drive. Like I said, you only need to do this, uh, filling the hard drive with zeros, in case there's some weird corruption going on, like, well, what I did here, is I just filled the hard drive with white noise, so that's as corrupted as it gets. But you could have just some random coincidence, just some bit, bits flipping for no reason, just randomly. It doesn't need, you, your hard drive doesn't necessarily need to fail entirely, but like, who cares? Anyway, if you don't need to do that, then you can just put in a new hard drive and replace the hard drive, uh, norm just normally do that, yeah. So that's what you just do, then it's perfectly reasonable to just do this thing. You don't really need to fill with, with zeros, that's just nonsense for weird weird scenarios like what I'm doing here with this but I'm just like demonstrating but yeah this is for demonstration purposes like I said this is not some comprehensive guide to the ZFS file system I'm pretty new to this myself so I'm not even qualified to do that what I'm really doing here is just promoting you this so yeah look into the ZFS file system do look into it it's, it's really good it's it's awesome basically it's really good it's it, it survives me filling the disk with just a random noise. Now, of course, because it's RAID set 1, it means that you can only fill one disk with random noise. If I now also fill the second disk, then it's unrecoverable. It's then a, a lost cause. You cannot, you cannot recover it anymore. But now I have filled one disk with nonsense again. This time SDA. And as I start going through these videos, fast forwarding, it's gonna start throwing some errors, because it's reading the hard drives and seeing that the SDA is not really working anymore. It's just nonsense. So you can see the errors are increasing. But the videos are still working fine. So, while one disk is down, you can still operate the computer just fine and go through the files normally. It is as if nothing is going on, really, but it means that while you are in this state, that one of these hard drives is not working, and then another one breaks, then you are screwed. You're, you're basically, you, lo you lose everything. 
everything goes away basically. So while some so while one hard drive is failing, you need to immediately replace that with a new one and then do this uh, replacing command. You have to do it basically as soon as possible because any time you wait is one more chance for one of your hard drives to hard drives to fail. So you have to replace it as soon as possible. So I'm not gonna replace that one. And again, it talks about some unknown file system. Yeah, that's just because I filled the disk with random nonsense. But in the real world, if your hard drive is failing, it's not filled with random nonsense. You're just gonna replace it with a new hard drive. So you don't need to do that with the with this stuff. Uh, oh yeah, I have to give the permission all of them. Mm, yeah, SDA. What still? What is this? A. Wait, I didn't give it to the A. What? The wrong one. Whatever. Yeah, uh, uh, you can basically just you can recover filling your hard drive with random noise. That's pretty cool. I just think that's cool. Yeah. So that's why I'm demonstrating it like this. Yeah. And basically, it's the same if I just fill it with zeros from here. I mean, I could just do it from here. That would basically be the same as... Like, that would just be the, basically the same as just... Like, replacing the hard drive, yeah. If your hard drive fails, you take it out and put a new clear one in. A fresh one with nothing on it. Wait, what? What are you talking about now? I haven't seen this before. Busy? What's that supposed to mean? Huh? That, 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 I don't know what was going on there, that's weird. I have no idea what that means. It's busy, I haven't seen that before. But who cares, it still worked. Yeah, it could also be user error, like I said, I'm not really... I'm pretty new to this myself, so whatever. But yeah, look into open ZFS or whatever version of ZFS you have, if you're using GNU plus Linux. Now, of course, there are operating systems which have native uh, ZFS support, so open ZFS is like... Well, actually, I don't know. Wait, no, it might be open ZFS that you're using on every operating system. Actually, I'm not sure. Maybe the original ZFS is proprietary or something. Actually, I don't know. Regardless, it doesn't really matter. ZFS file system. Yeah, look into it. Use ZFS. I recommend using ZFS. It's a good... It's a really good file system. It's awesome. You can fill your entire disk with random white noise and it will recover just fine. Yes. And now you can see that, well, it's all working just fine. And well, of course, the videos are always going to play fine, even if you have one disk failed. That's when you should replace it with a new hard drive when one of the disks fails. So it does work. Yeah, well, of course, now everything is fine. So let's fill it with zeros. Uh, let's go this time with the third disk. So then I go through all of them in this video. I'll fill the third disk with this time some zeros. So that might take some time to update for some reason. That's pretty weird that it takes a long time to update. I don't know why that is. But anyway, now that I start going through these videos again, it should show that it's not working anymore. Yeah. It's still working, of course, the videos are playing back as they should be. That's the whole point. And so you can make all kinds of other backups and whatever else if you need to do such things. While one of the disks is down, but you should really just replace the disk. Or, well, actually, I don't, I'm not really the one to tell you, should you first do a backup or replace the disk? Whatever, you go investigate that yourself. But really, you should always keep backups anyway. Whatever. Look into ZFS. ZFS is a good file system. Yes, I recommend it. It's basically... It basically guarantees that your files are always going to be there. Unless there's like some really astronomically unlikely scenario where multiple of your hard drives just fails at the same time. Well, actually it's not that unlikely if there's like physical damage to your computer and then many hard drives fail because of that. Well, that's possible. Well, that's th that you cannot recover from then. Yeah, well, that's just bad. That's unfortunate.
you know, that's why you should keep other backups outside of the computer, of course, like I said. Uh, anyway, this thing says it's degraded, but really it's just filled with zeros, so it might as well be unavailable. I don't really know. Sometimes it says sometimes it says that it's unavailable, and sometimes it says it's degraded. It doesn't really matter. What matters is that it's not working. So you replace it. And this time it was C. You replace C. Again with the unknown file system. Yeah, that's just... Wait, actually... No, 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 no. This time I filled with the zeros. Yeah, that's bizarre. You might need to do this for some reason. Yeah, actually, I don't know. Yeah, fill the disk with zeros. Now it says it's unavailable. But I already filled it with zeros from here. I don't know what's going on there. Anyway, it still works. What a cool file system. Yeah, I like this. This is good stuff. I recommend. Yes. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. It's working. I went through each of the hard drives. I filled them all with zeros or just white noise and it recovered from each of them. And you can just keep doing that and just messing with the hard drives like that and it will work. Not that you should mess with your hard drives in, in the real world, but like that's just what it means. The nature can mess with your hard drives and you can recover from it. So that's cool. That's the end of this video. No. Bye bye.